This is Bishop Gregory Brewer delivering the homily on Thursday, December 19th, 2013 in Orlando, Florida. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The gospel story of John the Baptist being conceived in all that preceded it in terms of the announcing of Gabriel to Zechariah, Elizabeth becoming pregnant, for me evokes two things. It causes me to think about how I think about time and what role God plays in time and also my responsibility in terms of how I live in the times that God has given me. This Zachar Luke writing is very clear that Zechariah is at the temple, in the sanctuary, at the offering of incense by a series of circumstances that could have only been engineered by God himself. I read one commentary said that at, at any given moment there were 18,000 serving in the temple in Jerusalem. And all of which, in terms of when you went to serve, was according to a combination of both schedule and by lot. If you noticed, that's exactly what the scripture is saying that Christie read, that it was time for his, in essence, regiment to serve. But you only got to go into the temple and offer incense once, literally in your whole life. This is considered the pinnacle of your career as a priest to be able to go behind the curtain and do what are actually really very simple manual acts, but are extraordinarily important. And so his regiment, by lot, his call, his job to do it, and at a time when a lot of people would be there, which was the time of the evening sacrifice. The way the procedure went is that the priest would come in first, in essence set everything up, and offer incense as a prelude to the whole burnt offering evening sacrifice. So he's in there doing his duty. I'm sure he has no idea that anything in the world unusual is going to happen. His responsibility is all Godward. He has no expectation that there's going to be any God response, which quite honestly says something to me, kind of as an aside, about duty. You know, if, if I think that somehow my job before God is quid pro quo, I'll do these things, and therefore God's going to do these things for me, it, there's something about that that's extraordinarily self-centered, and something that is entirely absent from Zechariah's ministry in this passage. He's only giving because it is, a, it is his appointed duty to do so. And therefore, as we would say, it is me right for him so to do. And he goes in to do that. And then so when the angel appears, he thinks, I'm a dead man. I mean, that's the terror that he's feeling. God is coming and no one can see the face of God and live. And it's Gabriel, no less, one of the chief messengers before God. Because he has no expectation whatsoever that God is going to respond to the things that he has been doing and praying, he is completely taken off guard. He doesn't expect the announcement. He thinks for sure we're never going to have kids. So that when Gabriel says, oh, you're, Elizabeth's going to be our son, it's like, <laughs> how, how, how am I going to know that? And Gabriel says, do you think you're talking to some sort of third-rate angel? <laughs> no, I am Gabriel. And therefore, that means if it's me, it's really going to happen. This is the word of God. So guess what? You're going to be mute. And which was, in fact, something that God used to communicate to the people that he had, in fact, seen something divine. If he had merely come out and said, I've seen an angel, and that's why I was delayed. They could have gone, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the very fact that he could come out and had been struck mute 
was the very sign of the people that something supernatural had happened, even though he couldn't tell them what it was. What does all of that cause me to do? Luke's very clear that Zechariah is there by divine appointment. It's not happenstance. And even though the scriptures say again and again in these special moments, like the announcing of the birth of Samuel, as well as the birth of John, that God ordered these divine events. The scripture says, yeah, there are these very, very special moments that are there to fulfill scripture, to raise up someone by divine appointment to, to occupy a very special place in God's history. But the New Testament actually goes on to say that you and I also are here by divine appointment. Perhaps not in the same, at the same caliber as John, except that Jesus, remember, if you were in church last Sunday, goes on to say, John the Baptist was great, but in comparison to those in the kingdom, he is the least. We really do occupy a divinely appointed place in God's economy. Our birth, our lineage, are not by accident. Even if we in birth order are considered a surprise baby or a mistake or something like that, it's never true within the eyes of God. And that we are here where we are by divine appointment. I don't know about you, but if I'm pulling into the parking lot getting ready to go into Target, for example, I'm not exactly thinking that I'm there by divine appointment. That's not the first thing that crosses my brain. But you see, to have that sense that wherever you are, a restaurant with a bunch of friends, but that all of those are places where God, in fact, could, as it were, to use our language, show up. And that there could be, in the midst of the most innocuous circumstances, in the most ordinary of conversations, could be a moment where God would choose to use you in the life of another person. Or could use that circumstance to speak to you is one of the clear implications of this passage today and is echoed throughout the New Testament. That's Paul's understanding of divine sovereignty. So we commemorate today and give thanks for God's hand in history that moved in such an extraordinary and actually somewhat earthy and humorous way to raise up John the Baptist. But the message is more than an historic commemoration. It's a reminder that we, as God's <clears throat> baptized people, also live in a divinely appointed time. And that we are called to be open to him using us or us being addressed at any moment, no matter where.